I just want to start off with a song that I wrote. It's called Hero Complex and it's about my experiences noticing different women around us and how we just need to take a promise to just be there for each other and as many women as we can. So That girl on the street begging for arms, no shoes on her feet. I should have been there for her. That girl on the train, sitting all alone, the night was getting late. I should have been there for her. That man on the scene, he's screaming out, I can't breathe. I should have been there. I should have been there for my sister. Should have been there for my brother. I should have been there for her. I should have been there for her. I should have been there for my mother. We should have been there for each other. I should have been there for her. I should have been there for her. That girl in the magazine trying to get smaller for the bigger screen. I should have been there for her. girl at the club left drunk looking for love did she get home i should have been there i should have been there for my sister should have been there for my brother i should have been there for her should have been there for her i should have been there for my mother we should have been there for each other should have been there for her I should have been there for her. That girl in the mirror, that girl in the mirror. I should have been there for her. I should have been there for her. That girl in the mirror, that girl in the mirror. I should have been there for her. Okay, so that was a song I wrote called hero complex and uh, yes I am a singer songwriter actor voiceover artist just as many things as I can do as an artist I try to be all of those things and um, I actually grew up on a stage because I was very blessed to be born into a family uh, my grandparents Jalabala Vaidya Gopal Sharman they built literally with their own hands a beautiful theater in Delhi called the Akshara which is where I have grown up. I have learned singing, dancing, Kathak. I have watched my grandparents perform. I have performed with them, whether it's just accompanying my grandfather for poetry readings or singing the Beatles with him or singing Kale Segal or just doing little bits here and there, two full-blown plays as I got older. And uh, the thing is, uh, for me, the idea of gender it was broken very long ago by my own grandmother, Jalabala Vedya, because she did this play, the Ramayan, uh, written in English by my grandfather, it toured all over the world. And she performed all characters of the play on her own. It was a solo performance. So she performs Dasharat, she does Kai Kai, she does Hanuman, Ram, Sita. And I am watching her as a child seamlessly transition between all these different characters. I won't even call them different genders, just different characters. And so as a child who grew up in this environment on this safe space, I called home, which was the stage, this idea of gender didn't really bother anyone at home because it's not what we were about. And I think the place where it really started to exist, these idea of genders and like tagging people, etc., was when I started going to school in Delhi. And I went to a, you know, a very Delhi school where everybody was like from a business Delhi family. And I was the only girl, I think, in my class, who first of all, who was South Indian, second of all, who was from an artist sort of background. And, uh, you know, it was a sort of place where if you're somebody who's not sure about your gender, if you're a boy who's slightly, how do you say, feminine, if you're a girl who's a little boyish, blah, blah, blah you get teased, you know, and you are from a very early age, made to sort of feel uncomfortable and sort of lost about where you sort of belong. And that was my sort of experience in a school, you know, I had these parallel lives going on as this theater 
girl who was a little rock star in my head and then in school as this mute child who barely spoke to anyone never participated in a school play or choir or anything and so it became very difficult for me i be, i you know i was teased for many things including like my skin color and what not and uh, I, this went on for a long time till i shifted to a boarding school in masuri beautiful school where uh, i had a very uh, filmy kabhi khushi kabhi gham moment my first week in school in boarding school i am sitting in assembly and uh, we have to practice janagana mana because uh, independence day was coming so i sat down in assembly and there are kids from all over the world in this school there's a australian student sitting here a south korean student sitting here a canadian behind me you know and then janagana mana starts playing on the speakers the lyrics come up and everybody got up you know the, the chinese student got up the korean student got up i got up and everybody in their different accents and their different backgrounds they started singing janagana mana just you know it and that was a beautiful moment for me i remember crying at that very moment i think i was about 14 and a half years old because i suddenly saw myself in the midst of so many people from so many different backgrounds coming together appreciating each other's you know where they come from who they are it becoming a part of you and i suddenly felt more like i belong in this place where there were hundred nationalities rather than belonging to my delhi school where there were kids from just one section of delhi you know and uh, one one turning point for me was um when this irish physics teacher of mine heard me singing one day you know i was just practicing with my roommate and she was korean and he heard me singing this kelly clarkson song he said you guys must perform this you're going to perform this after lunch tomorrow in the lunch area and i was just like oh my god no i <laughs> you know i've never performed outside of my family's like theater my home safe space my stage and he said no nope, nothing doing you're doing it i'm setting up a mic i'm setting up a speaker a keyboard you better show up at 4 pm so when the bell rang i'm running to the lunch area there are kids everywhere shouting chatting and i'm shouting i'm like i'm performing guys please you know come watch me this is my first time performing and you know in the middle of lunch i suddenly started singing and my roommate starts playing and everybody who's playing and eating talking they just became quiet they heard my voice they walked towards me and you know that was the first time i had really broken away from this safe sort of space i called home and i i realized that hey maybe i can do this on my own and i was shaking you know i, was, I still shake sometimes when i perform like right now i was still shaking you can probably hear it in my voice but um and i thought about this quote because i love will smith very much and he says you know if you can't face your fear just do it scared and that's exactly i think what being an artist also has a lot to do with you know we sometimes i think we're mad to think that we'll write a song and hundreds of people will actually connect to it and hear it we really have to just put ourselves out there and that's why the topic i was sort of wanting to touch upon was just the journey of you know going from uncomfortable to being uncomfortable from going from comfortable to being uncomfortable and just transitioning between these two throughout your life as an artist and the ironical part about being in this industry where you know either you're a writer actor singer comedian whatever you are you put yourself out there you know no matter what religion background that doesn't matter you put your art out there and the more comfortable you seem to the public the more uncomfortable sometimes it makes them like you know when i see a friend of mine who might be an influencer or something post a picture where she's feeling really comfortable in her skin or with her body hair or something that person is immediately of course appreciated but she's also immediately trolled and so it's so it's so ironical that when one decides to sort of really come out and try to be comfortable with themselves they are made to feel so uncomfortable by people around them and why is it such a threat to the public and to people <clears throat> to see this person sort of growing and why don't they support this growth and i think that's a huge part of this sort of industry the media industry or whatever the artist industry that we are a part of and um, of course as a singer i've done so many things i've done musicals i've done jingles shows blah 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 
and uh, i was you know kind of tired of the scene i wanted a change of scene and one of the things i did last year was i sort of ran off to new york city i said you know maybe i want to live here maybe i want to be a musician here and i tried to you know i set up gigs for myself i did independent shows i met musicians there and it was the first time i had actually received feedback from a foreign audience and they even enjoyed like this hindi song i did and i was just like i want to stay in the city i began working as a waitress to support myself over there because i was just like mom i don't think i want to come back right now you know and that was a whole new experience for me just like first of all being in the service industry you know not everybody was very excited that nisa has gone to become a waitress you know in in new york city but it was just me saying yes to experiences me not taking people's judgments like oh my god you know you're working as a waitress because those words were said to me by people close to me you know and it's not about that it's about you as an artist every experience you feel you put it into your work it just happens and it may come from a place of discomfort comfort wherever it comes from it will and it should go into your work and again you know one of the the reason i left new york at all was because i got this huge opportunity to record a song with ar rahman sir <clears throat> which i got to really i mean which released this year it's called you got me it's on youtube but uh, yeah and it was such an amazing experience interacting with ar rahman and he's just such a wonderful person he's all about the music you know he doesn't care who you are where you're from he wants to hear your voice and that's what it's about and so for me if i go into a studio mostly i'm feeling very nervous but ar rahman sir ar rahman sir made me feel comfortable why because all he expected from me was my voice and the skill of my voice so the message i kind of just wanted to leave with was that um issues these days especially for women especially for women who put themselves out there or anybody who puts themselves out there people who are watching and consuming <clears throat> it goes beyond our petty problems and competition and jealousy you know there needs to be a movement towards supporting people who are transitioning into becoming comfortable as people who you know put their thoughts there put their opinions out there and i think you know people like bhika ji ka ma or ani lakshmi bai even rosa parks they didn't just do one thing to change the world they did something every day so as an artist what is it that i'm going to do in my next song in my next film in my next ad whatever i do what is it that when a person watches me what is that one thing that they're going to really you know grab from that experience that will make them want to do something good something for the betterment of society all in all and um, yeah that's basically the message i wanted to sort of work on and and leave with is to have this sort of feeling of being together and really letting people be the best version of themselves and i am going to end by singing this song um by elisha keys it's based on the poem i know why the cage bird sings and i'm dedicating it to my mom cuz she just finished fighting covid oh my god anyway uh, but she really likes the song um so yeah it's based on the maya angelou poem i know why the cage bird sings Right now I feel like a bird cage without a key Everyone comes to stare at me with so much joy and bravery they don't know how i feel inside through my smile i cry they don't know what they're doing to me keeping me from flying that's why i say that 
I know why the cage bird sings. Only joy comes from song. She's so rare and beautiful to others. Why not just set her free? So she can fly, fly, fly. Spreading her wings and her song. Let her fly, fly, fly. For the world to see. Let her fly, 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 for the world to see, for the world to see. All right, thank you very much.